and there were shepherds living out of the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. If you missed last week, we talked about uh, how God wraps, and I showed you a package where uh, I didn't have enough wrapping paper to get all the way to the bottom, and I, I told you that it was the Dave Lead All Special, and I'm here to tell you that someone texted me really a gift. It was a picture of them experiencing the Dave Lead All Special. So I just wanna let you know this, this Christmas season, if you can't get all the wrapping paper around that gift, you're not alone. It's me, other people, and you participating in the Dave Lead All Special. And if you didn't catch that message, go back to last week. We had fun talking about how God wraps. Uh, to, today we're talking about the idea of double wrapped. And um, in the passage of scripture we're going to read in just a few moments, the word wrapped is used twice. And in Luke chapter two, uh, it's really that day that we've been waiting for, right? The day that Jesus would be born. And it's a passage of scripture that you have likely heard or read before. But I've been praying over the last uh, several days and weeks as I've been preparing for this message that, that those of us who are very weary of the last year would have peace and rest and joy. I've sensed very strongly that in our lives, it has been a wearying year. And some of us, uh, we're hoping that we're getting out of the pandemic. Raise your hand if you're hoping that we're getting out of the pandemic. Uh, that, that there's, it's like, ha, variant! It's like, uh, just when you thought you're out of the clear, it's like, bam. And uh, whether you feel like we're you know, still in the heat of the, the pandemic or we're coming out of it, you know, I'd propose to you that God, if nothing else, is wrapping up this year in your life. And I would, I would hope, I would pray that God would wrap up a season of weariness in many of our lives today. And just as God is all about doing new things, we also know that God is in the business of helping us wrap up old things. And perhaps you've been in a season that's been destructive, a season of great weariness and restlessness, maybe even a, a season of deep pain, of deep waiting, and I'm here to tell you that I believe Luke chapter two was not just for Joseph and Mary, but it was for anybody who needs a season wrapped up in their lives. And I, I think about this song that we sing almost every Christmas, Oh Holy Night. Raise your hand if you believe you've sang the song, Oh Holy Night, before, many of us. There's this line that we so frequently sing, but do not experience. Isn't it interesting? So many of us celebrate Christmas, we do not experience Christmas. And my prayer is that you would experience Christmas, but it's really this line that gets me time after time. It says, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Maybe you've been in a season of being weary, and now God wants to bring you into a season of rejoicing not because your circumstances have been perfected, but because you've embraced the savior that you can rejoice about. And so often we get jammed up by that 50th conversation about how stressed we are, right? Or we get jammed up with the debates about the vaccine or politics or cryptocurrency or inflation or whatever you have going on, and it's like, at some point, we gotta wrap it up. Have you ever done this? Wrap, when our kids are a little bit squirrely, it's like, wrap it up, wrap it up. At some point, I need to do that in my own life, right? Dave, wrap it up, bro. It's time to move on into what God would have for me. I would propose to you that in Luke chapter two, that Mary and Joseph are also a little weary. Now, we don't have scriptural backing to say that. Mary and Joseph were weary because. But I'm here to tell you that it, we read in Luke chapter two that Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which is 95 miles. 
to register in the census that they were going to take part in. And they were doing this not with a Tesla that you can recharge, (laughs) not with an automobile, not even a horse, but perhaps a donkey or maybe walking. And those of you who love to hang out at Gander Mountain on the weekends, this journey would have been for you. But now imagine that you're Joseph, again, a real human being who walked the earth, and he's gonna bring Mary from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem while she is pregnant, so he's dead, because it's like, Joseph, you could have planned ahead before I got pregnant and brought me to Bethlehem. But instead he waits, right? And now he's bringing Mary there, and we, we believe probably Mary started to go into labor en route. Men, this would be a problem. There was no heavenly epidural, okay? (laughs) Let's read Luke chapter two. I'm getting ahead of myself. (laughs) In Luke chapter two, it says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius, and many of you are like, ah, that's how you say that name. I don't know if it is, just kidding, I looked on. Google, and I pronounced it correctly, I believe, was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to to Judea. I got it. See, now you feel better about yourself. And you don't have to worry about struggling over word-finding difficulties. To Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Now, I'm gonna tell you, this is not how it usually goes. It's not like, and it came time for the baby to be born. If this is how your pregnancy and delivery experience went, I want you to write me an email, david.leadall at northview.life, and I want you to take a picture of how happy your face was if that was your birthing experience, and it came time for the baby to be born. For us, it was not quite like that. It was a little bit like, ah! And that was not Alyssa, that was me. <laughs> and they don't, give the, they don't give the dad anything, by the way. It's all about mom, and I'm like, I need the Ativan, okay? <laughs> Back to Luke, chapter two. We're getting off track. Shame on you, Dave. It came time for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger. Wrapped him in cloths. It's the first time we see the word wrapped. And placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now, Joseph's already dead because, not physically, but like emotionally, he's, he's, he's dead because he's now brought Mary you know, to Bethlehem and then there were no Airbnb reservations to be found. And so now he's like double dead. So now they're in a cave with farm animals giving birth, and there's, and that's every woman's dream, by the way, to be in a cave with farm animals having a child. I'm sure, I'm sure of it. The hospital accreditation bodies would have never allowed this back in the day, but here they are, having a baby. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available to them. Verse eight, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night, and an angel appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. Can you imagine if you're like working the 7-Eleven and you're like, this is such a boring shift. And then an angel comes and says, listen, this is gonna blow your minds. A savior has been born. Can you imagine the shepherds being like, sweet, this is like the most boring job ever. I mean, we get to fight like a lion or a bear once in a while to keep, you know, the sheep away, but this is, or the, the wolves away from the sheep, but this is way better. Like we're gonna get to go to Bethlehem and see a savior that the angels talked about. And they interrupt this kind of normal, mediocre life to involve the shepherds in the story of Jesus' birth. The glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Of all the things that the Savior being born would cause, the angel said that it would be joy. Let that sink in for a little bit. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. Everyone say savior. Savior Savior has been born to you. Not an inspirational teacher, not just some person that would do great things. A savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby, here we see it again, wrapped in cloths 
and lying in a manger. So not only was Mary wrapping Jesus up, but also the angel said that that's how you're gonna tell who Jesus is. It, this baby's going to be wrapped up in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those, peace of all the things that the angel said would come, they focused on peace. It would be peace that would come on all those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Can you give someone next to you a fist pound? Say, you're doing great today, by the way. If you are in the row by yourself, do what I do. self nucks the self nucks of encouragement. You can steal that, by the way. That's not trademarked or anything. Um, you're like, there's a reason why it's not trademarked, Dave. As Mary is wrapping up Jesus, something else is being wrapped up. And what was happening was very significant. God was wrapping up a season of waiting. People for hundreds of years were sacrificing animals under the obedient law that they wanted to follow of God, which is that with, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And so to delay the penalty of sin, people who loved God sacrificed animals to delay the penalty of sin routinely in their lives. People who love God would do this for hundreds of years, waiting for a perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, who was prophesied about all throughout the Old Testament, as early as Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter one, two, and three, all the way through the Old Testament prophets. And we were waiting for the Savior, the Messiah, to come. And, and we were weary of not knowing God personally but rather experiencing God through prophets and priests and kings under the influence intermittently of the Spirit of God who would come and then leave and then come and then leave. And, and someone like you or I would, would perhaps never truly experience the presence of God directly. It was always through other means. And, and this was the time that that season was being closed up and, and the, the, the slavery to sin and, and constant animal sacrifice to deal with sin was being wrapped up as Mary was wrapping up Jesus. You know, there's always more going on than what we realize in our lives. It's kind of like when, when you get crest white strips for Christmas, there's a message being sent to you. It's not just like, I just, I had, I just felt like I just wanted to give this to you. No, it's like, I'm giving you a message. That's happened to me a couple times. And I have a lot of dental hygienists in my family, so I'm, I, I walk in insecurity anyway, okay? <laughs> there's always more happening than what we realize. I wonder that, I wonder if in your life, if there's, rather than the desire that God has to do something new in your life, if maybe he wants to help you wrap up something in your life. And maybe it's that season of deep pain against somebody that hurt you. Maybe it's a season of not sharing the good things in your life with other people that God has done. Maybe God wants to wrap up a season in your life of weariness from things you cannot control. But around the corner into this next year, you will find that once you get there, there will only be more things that you don't have any control over and it's about stepping back and saying, God, I thank you for Jesus that helps me close the season of worry in my life and pursuing Jesus just because of who he is. And whether you know it or not, you are giving the birth of Jesus much more importance than you even realize. And not just you, but the whole world. 
Today is December 12th. If you're watching with us online like weeks from now, it's no longer December 12th. I hate to break it. But it's December 12th today as we have this service. And that means that it is 2,021 years plus 12 months and 12 days from when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And not only us, but the world measures all events in reference to when Jesus Christ was born. We call that BC to AD. How many of you, you have like a BC in your own life? You have a before Christ time that you're not too proud of? Raise your hand if you have a BC that you're not very proud of before Christ. BC stands for before Christ. AD, ooh, what does that stand for? Anno Domini, which is the year of our Lord. We're in the year 2021 AD in reference to the year of our Lord, Jesus Christ. If you and I are willing to map out everything in our lives, like in my life, we had the move back to Fargo in 2013. We had Jay in 2015. We had Harper in 2017. We had Jones in 2019. I left a career in pharmacy to be a full-time minister in 2021. It makes me a little nervous about what's gonna happen in 2023 because Alyssa and I are odd and we tend to live life in the odd years. I don't know what it is. Maybe that means 2022 is like this year of peace. I don't know. But I'm measuring everything important in my life in reference to what? The birth of Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting? If I can do the chronology of my life based on the birth of Jesus as the reference point of the events of my life, I can lean on Jesus to be the reference point of how I live. Praise God. But some of us, it's like we don't even realize that the BC to AD happened and we don't actually say, like, God, what is something that you want to end in my life so that I can go into something new that doesn't involve what's before Christ taking hold of the situation in my life? I so frequently refer to Christmas in my own life as the season where it gets to be a little bit different. Follow me for a second. In Easter, it's usually easy for me. I celebrate what Jesus Christ did for me, living a perfect life because God had a purpose and dying even though he had done nothing wrong because God had a purpose. And then I believe that Jesus rose again because God had a perfect purpose to restore relationship with me. And at Easter, we celebrate, and we're gonna have a great Easter this year. It's gonna be awesome. But we're gonna celebrate Easter and it's gonna be like, Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice because Jesus even said, I lay down my life on my own accord. And so I can get behind Easter. Easter, like I get to like celebrate what Jesus did for me. But what about Christmas? When Jesus is born in this cave with farm animals in a town very far away from his hometown, Jesus has done nothing for anybody on earth. He's just a child with some cloths wrapped around him in a cattle feeding trough. But the shepherds come and the angels sing and we'll read it next week about how wise men, magi from Persia come to give him gifts and, and what is this all for? None of what Jesus did for anybody, it's just celebrating him for, for who he is. Have you ever thought about that? This Christmas, you can just love Jesus for just who he is, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords the Savior that was born, the Messiah that was to come. And rather than saying, Jesus, I'm, I'm thankful for saving, I'm thankful that you saved me, I'm thankful that you forgave me, I thank you that you've provided for me, this Christmas we can step back and say, thank you, Jesus, and here's the thing, just for who you are. Um, this is hard for me, and I propose that it's hard for you sometimes because you're too much like me and follow me. In my life, I've had this problem. And this problem, many times, is that I am what I do. Maybe you can identify with me. You kind of identify who you are by what you do. This is dangerous as a pastor because you're only as valuable as the last sermon that you preached. And maybe the sermon stunk and maybe you didn't get anything out of it. And then I feel bad because I've identified who I am by what I do. 
And just as Jesus came and was born and was celebrated just for who he was, I have to reflect on my own life. Because if I believe that I am only as good as what I do, what happens then if I just feel like I'm a ladder? Follow me. Many times in my life and in your life, you will hear things that have biblical resonance, but they're not necessarily true. Here, here's one for you. God wants to use you. And I was encouraged with this all growing up. Dave, God wants to use your life. He wants to do great things through you. That's great, but you, you know, I'm not a ladder. I'm not a power drill. What happens if a rung is broken? Am I then useless to God? If the power drill burns out and I'm just a power drill, do I become a second afterthought to God? I have to realize every day that before I was ever a person to be used by God, I was a son that God loved just because of who I am. And this Christmas, you need to know that Jesus came just because of who you are and saw you, the Bible refers to, if you know Jesus, you have become a son or daughter of God. And before God will ever emphasize using you, he wants you to know that you're just a son or daughter to be loved and accepted. And just as we love Jesus for who he is, it's a message. It's the double wrap. It's something, there's something else going on. Jesus is saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Love me for who I am. I'm a baby. I can't do anything for y'all. But here's the thing. You love me for who I am. As a reflection, I, I love you for who you are. Jesus loves you so much, he wants relationship with you, not so that you can do a bunch of stuff. That will happen out of your love for Jesus. You see, in John chapter 14, we read, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I've commanded you. Jesus also said, if you do not love me, you will not do what I've commanded you. What Jesus is saying is start with love. Develop attachment and relationship with me and all those things that I've asked you to do, that will, that will come out of the outflow of that. I prayed with somebody a couple weeks ago who was in a jam because there's someone coming into their family through marriage. Nobody likes the person but the decision's been made. I said, you know, biblically, now's not the time to grab another stick of dynamite and throw it. The emphasis is to say, you know, if this person is someone that's coming into our family, I will love that person. Many of us will see someone this Christmas that maybe we prefer would not be around. What if as Jesus' face shines on you this Christmas that your face would shine on someone this Christmas? And that might mean rather than like surfing Instagram or email or the scores from the football game, you just you put it down and like have eye contact. Maybe that's all you needed to hear today. Like, wow, at Christmas, I'm just gonna accept who God's placed in this household for who they are, love them for where they are, and maybe through that love experience of exchanging kindness and patience and love, this person might actually know who Jesus is. Because remember, without, um, this, it's the kindness of God. Without kindness, we close a door to repentance in somebody's life, potentially. Because it's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. And so in your life, it's number one understanding, you know, I've been weary of my previous season, I'm ready to be done with it. I'm done with that. I'm maybe uh, needing to realize that in Luke chapter two, Jesus came to be worshiped and glorified just for who he is as the son of God, the savior of the world, and not because he's done all these great things for me. And then maybe there's someone in your life this year that just needs that same kind of unconditional love and acceptance that Jesus would give you, but maybe you and I haven't given that other person. Can we stand in this place? And I just wanna welcome you to bow your heads and close your eyes if you wanna remove distraction.
I truly believe today is a day where you will come before God and you will say, just as BC turned to AD in Luke chapter two, I am ready to leave an old season of something behind, something toxic, something hurtful or painful, something unfortunate, a source of bitterness. I don't know what that is for you. Maybe it's a season of waiting and you need to say, you know what, I, I'm done focusing on this thing I wanted so much and I'm gonna start focusing on Jesus and said, I'm, I'm letting that season be wrapped up. I'm gonna pray over us and then I have one more question. But I'm gonna pray over us in this way. Father, we just ask that as Mary wrapped up Jesus and as the angels referred to Jesus being the savior wrapped up in claws and lying in a manger, I believe just God, as you were wrapping up a season of weariness, and waiting for the Savior, that you are perhaps wrapping up and wanting to wrap up a season in our own lives. And for those of us that have been desperate, God, for the pain to be over, desperate for the bitterness to be gone, desperate for relationship that's been broken to that keeps haunting us, for that season to be over, we proclaim that the Holy Spirit is working and is powerful and is able to bring a toxic season to an end. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I need us to understand that if we were having a hamburger after church today and I, and I asked you, how are you doing with, with the spiritual side of your life? What is Jesus to you? You'd be like, I love Christmas. I love singing Christmas carols. I, I'm, I'm a good person. I've done good things. I've even given someone money one time to help them when they were in a jam. If I knew that you weren't gonna throw me out of the burger joint, I would just tell you really kindly that you cannot work hard enough to be good enough for God. We read in the Bible that the wages of that sin that we've both done is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the very person we celebrate. Today you might be asking, why did Jesus come? It's because God had a purpose. Why did Jesus die and was raised to life? Because God had a purpose to be close to you and to forgive you from the sin that separates you from God and to be in a forgiveness-based relationship. And if that's you, I just want you to start saying to God silently in your own heart or quietly as you pray, Jesus, I know you want all of me. Jesus, I know you want every part of my life. I, I know that you even want the dark places that I've kept away from you. And I know that you want me to have new life in you. But if, if you're in this place and you wanna be included in a prayer to confess your sin to God, and to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. When we say Lord, we just mean leader of your life. If that's you, put your hand over your heart right now. I want to be included in the prayer that Dave's gonna pray in just a moment to accept Jesus Christ as leader of my life, as forgiver of my life, as Savior in my life. And there are many of you doing this right now. I want us to pray in our hearts as I pray out loud. Father, I thank you for Jesus, that he came to be worshiped and glorified as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords just for who he is. And I proclaim today, I say yes to Jesus, knowing that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I can be saved. And not just saved for the sake of avoiding hell, but saved to live for you wholeheartedly my whole life. And this Christmas is my BC to AD experience. And I refuse to be held captive by passivity and mediocrity of the life I've been living. And I choose to live wholeheartedly and end the season of not sharing my faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm willing to share with somebody else who loves me that I've made a decision for Jesus Christ, that I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And even though it's hard sometimes, I give you the praise and I give you the glory for my life, knowing that you can save me and redeem me. And all of us in this place, can we just, with hands across this place, celebrate for just a few moments in worship. And I'm gonna pray this way. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who's worthy of praise and worship, just for being the Messiah, just for being the savior of the world, born in Bethlehem, 
to a virgin to save the world, to be the perfect sacrifice, the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we lift up our hands, knowing that God, you are so much more worthy than a song. You are so much more worthy than raised hands. And we give you praise for not just what you're doing, but for who you can be in my heart, in my family's heart, and in our entire household. And over these next few moments, we just pray that you would change us and give us strength for this Christmas season as we worship you. Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not near, shall not fail. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has raised focus on us for just who we are. We give you praise, we give you thanks. And for those of us that need a season to end, to draw close to you, we ask that that miracle would happen. And even as we pray now and as we come forward for prayer, would you end seasons of weariness and pain and allow us to walk a new direction in practical and in spiritual ways and in the setting of community. There are so many people in this place and online that we have those people in our life that love us and want to help us get in that new direction and end an old season, but we haven't opened up about it. We haven't been vulnerable about it. And we ask that you would help us to open up our hearts to other people too, knowing that many of us are walking through these kinds of things and we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for making Northview part of your week. And uh, our prayer team is coming forward. Um, I got to pray with a precious lady who's been in a season of waiting for service. And I think there's a lot of faith in this room that God's gonna be helping people close out some seasons. And so I'd encourage you to receive prayer. If you'd like to connect with our church in any way or take advantage of any other opportunity that might be in our church, maybe you heard about water baptisms, maybe you accepted Christ this morning, many of you did, your next step is to be water baptized. And I would encourage you to text either NV Baptism to 28950, or if you wanna connect with the church in any way, text CONNECT to 28950, and Bennett and Alexis Euler, our good friends, will reach out and just ask you, hey, how can we help you find your next step? But we love you, have an awesome week. Come back next week and to our Christmas services as we continue to celebrate Jesus. God bless you.